Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss more The Walking Dead choices and decide which is the worst possible choice you can make. This is part 2. Link to first part is in description. Let's start with first choice related to David. As you may recall, David is one of the two survivors that Lee and the group encounter in the woods, along with Ben. They are both students from a nearby school who are on a hunting trip with their teacher, Mr. Parker. Unfortunately, they ran into a group of walkers, and David got his leg caught in a bear trap. Lee and the others have to decide whether to try to free him by cutting off his leg with an axe, or leave him to be devoured by the walkers. So which choice is the worst one and why? If you choose to cut off David's leg, you have to use the axe four times to chop it off, while he screams in agony. Mark will then carry him to safety, while Travis, the other student, gets distracted and bitten by a walker. The group will then escape with Ben and David while Travis is left behind. David will then be taken back to the motor inn where he and Ben are allowed inside. However, David will not survive his injury and will turn into a walker later that night. He will then attack Katja, the group's doctor, and bite her in the shoulder. Lee will have to kill him, and Katja will die from blood loss. This will also affect Kenny, Katja's husband, who will become depressed and angry. If you choose to leave David behind, he will beg you not to, and tell you that he has a wife and kids. You will then try to break the chain or the tree, but it will be futile. Eventually, the timer will run out, and you will have to run away with Ben and Mark, while David is left to be eaten by the walkers. Travis, however, will protest that you can't leave David, and will try to take Mark's rifle, but he will accidentally shoot himself in the gut, severely injuring him. The group will then escape with Ben and Travis, while David is left behind. Travis will then be taken back to the motor inn, where he and Ben are allowed inside. However, Travis will not survive his wound and will turn into a walker later that night. He will then attack Katja, the group's doctor, and bite her in the shoulder. Lee will have to kill him, and Katja will die from blood loss. This will also affect Kenny, Katja's husband, who will become depressed and angry. As you can see, both choices have the same outcome. Katja dies, Kenny suffers, and Lee has to kill a walker. However, there are some differences in how the other characters react and how the story progresses. For example, if you cut off David's leg, Mark will be more sympathetic and supportive of you, while Ben will be more scared and guilty. If you leave David behind, Mark will be more angry and distrustful of you, while Ben will be more grateful and loyal. Also, if you cut off David's leg, you will have to deal with the St. John brothers, who are the owners of the dairy farm where the group goes for food. They will accuse you of stealing their gas and will try to kill you. If you leave David behind, you will have to deal with the bandits, who are the ones who actually stole the gas and will try to ambush you. So, which choice is the worst one? Well, in my opinion, the worst choice is to cut off David's leg. It's a very risky and wasteful thing to do, as you're using up valuable resources and time that could be used for something else. You're using up your axe, which is a useful weapon and tool. You're using up your gas, which is a scarce and precious commodity. You're using up your time, which is limited and precious. You're also attracting more walkers with the noise and the blood, which is dangerous and foolish. It's better to save your resources and time for something more important and urgent, rather than something hopeless and futile. But to be honest, it's a very pointless and meaningless thing to do, as it doesn't change anything for the better. It doesn't save David's life, as he dies anyway. It doesn't save Katja's life, as she dies anyway. It doesn't save Kenny's sanity, as he suffers anyway. It doesn't save the group's safety, as they face danger anyway. It doesn't save the group's harmony, as they argue anyway. It's better to make a choice that has some positive impact and significance, rather than something that has none. Next choice. Whether to spare or kill Jolene, the crazy woman who lives in the woods and claims that Clementine is her daughter. First, let's recap who Jolene is and how we encounter her. Jolene is a former member of the Save Lots Bandits, a group of raiders who terrorize the area and extort food from the St. John's Dairy Farm. Jolene left the bandits after they took her daughter Danielle and presumably raped and killed her. Jolene became obsessed with Clementine, thinking that she is her daughter, and started spying on Lee's group with a video camera. She also stole Clementine's hat and kept it in her camp. In Episode 2, Starved for Help, Lee and Danny St. John go to the woods to investigate some bandit activity. They find Jolene's camp, where they discover Clementine's hat, a video camera, and some boxes from the dairy. Jolene shows up and points a crossbow at them, accusing them of stealing Clementine from her. 
She also warns them that the St. John's are hiding something sinister and that they should not trust them. At this point, Lee has two options, either try to reason with Jolene or shoot her. If Lee tries to reason with Jolene, he will ask her to lower her weapon and talk. Jolene will refuse and say that Lee is lying and that he is working with the St. John's. She will also say that she has proof of what they are doing and that she will show it to him. However, before she can do anything, Danny will shoot her in the head, killing her instantly. He will say that he had to do it because she was about to shoot Lee. Lee will be shocked and angry at Danny for killing her. He will also wonder what Jolene was talking about and what proof she had. If Lee shoots Jolene, he will pull out his gun and fire at her, hitting her in the head. She will fall to the ground, dead. Danny will be surprised and impressed by Lee's quick action. He will say that Lee saved his life and that Jolene was crazy and dangerous. Lee will feel guilty and regretful for killing her. He will also wonder what Jolene was talking about and what proof she had. So, which choice is the worst one, and why? Well, in my opinion, the worst choice is to shoot Jolene. By shooting Jolene, Lee loses the opportunity to learn more about the St. John's and their secret. Jolene was about to show him something on the video camera that could have revealed the truth about the dairy and the cannibalism. By killing her, Lee destroys the evidence and the chance to expose the St. John's before it's too late. Lee also loses the moral high ground and becomes more like the bandits and the St. John's. He kills an unarmed woman who was clearly mentally unstable and traumatized by the loss of her daughter. He also kills her in front of Clementine, who will witness the whole scene and be horrified by Lee's action. This will affect Clementine's trust and respect for Lee and his judgment. So, there you have it. That's why I think shooting Jolene is the worst choice in The Walking Dead, Season 1. What do you think? Do you agree or disagree with me? Let me know in the comments below. Next choice. Whether to refuse to kill Larry or help kill Larry in Episode 2, Starved for Help. As you may recall, this choice occurs when Lee and his group are locked in a meat locker by the cannibalistic St. John family. Larry, who has a heart condition, suffers a heart attack and collapses on the floor. Kenny, fearing that Larry will turn into a walker, wants to smash his head with a salt lick. Lily, Larry's daughter, wants to try to revive him with CPR. Lee has to decide who to side with in this tense situation. If you refuse to kill Larry, you will side with Lily and try to perform CPR on him. Kenny will be angry with you and call you a coward. He will also lose trust and respect for you, which will affect your relationship with him for the rest of the season. However, you will gain loyalty and gratitude from Lily, who will appreciate your attempt to save her father. You will also maintain your humanity and morality as you will not kill a potentially alive person. But remember, refusing to kill Larry will also have a tragic outcome. As you are trying to revive him, Larry will suddenly open his eyes and bite Lily's hand, revealing that he was already dead and turned into a walker. Kenny will then grab the salt lick and smash Larry's head, killing him for good. You and your group will then escape the meat locker and confront the St. John family. If you help kill Larry, you will side with Kenny and agree to smash his head with a salt lick. Lily will be furious with you and call you a murderer. She will also lose trust and respect for you, which will affect your relationship with her for the rest of the season. However, you will gain loyalty and gratitude from Kenny, who will appreciate your support and courage. You will also prevent Larry from turning into a walker and biting anyone. However, helping to kill Larry will also have a terrible outcome. As you are about to smash his head, Larry will slightly move his mouth, indicating that he was still alive and could have been revived. You will then kill him anyway, in front of his horrified daughter. You and your group will then escape the meat locker and confront the St. John family. First of all, killing Larry is morally wrong, as you are taking away a human life without any certainty that he was dead or turning. You are also betraying Lily, who is your ally and friend, and causing her immense grief and trauma. You are also risking your own sanity and conscience, as you will have to live with the guilt and regret of your action. But we don't care much morals, I know. Killing Larry is also strategically unwise, as you are weakening your group and creating a rift between its members. You are losing Lily as a valuable asset and potential leader, and making her an enemy instead. You are also alienating other people who might disagree with your choice, such as Clementine, who will be shocked and scared by your violence. You are also making yourself more vulnerable to the St. John family, who will use your murder as a leverage against you. 
Killing Larry is unnecessary, as you are not gaining any significant benefit or advantage from it. You are not preventing Larry from turning into a walker, as he was already dead and turned. You are not saving anyone from being bitten, as Larry was not a threat to anyone. You are not escaping the meat locker faster, as you still have to deal with the St. John family. You are not improving your relationship with Kenny, as he will still have conflicts and disagreements with you later on. Next choice, whether to spare or kill Danny St. John, the cannibal brother who kidnapped and tortured our group. In episode two, starved for help, Lee and his group are running low on food and supplies, so they decide to accept an invitation from a seemingly friendly family who owns a dairy farm. However, they soon discover that the St. John's are actually cannibals who lure survivors into their farm and butcher them for meat. They also find out that the St. John's have captured Mark, one of their group members, and cut off his legs for dinner. Lee and his group manage to escape from the dining room and confront the St. John's in the barn. This is where the choice comes in. Lee finds Danny St. John holding a gun to Clementine's head, threatening to kill her if Lee doesn't drop his weapon. Lee manages to knock Danny down and free Clementine, but Danny is still alive and trapped in a bear trap. Lee can either kill him with a pitchfork or spare him and walk away. So what are the consequences of this choice? Well, not much actually. This choice doesn't affect the story or the characters in any significant way. No matter what you choose, the outcome is pretty much the same. Danny will either die from the pitchfork wound or from the walkers that overrun the farm. Either way, he won't appear again in the game. The only difference is how Clementine and Lily will react to your choice. If you kill Danny, Clementine will be horrified and scared by your action. She will ask you why you did it and say that it was wrong. She will also lose some trust in you and be more distant from you for a while. Lily, on the other hand, will approve of your choice and say that you did what you had to do. She will also be more loyal to you and support you in future decisions. If you spare Danny, Clementine will be relieved and grateful that you didn't kill him. She will say that you are a good person and hug you. She will also trust you more and be closer to you for a while. Lily, however, will disapprove of your choice and say that you are a hypocrite. She will also be more hostile to you and question your leadership in future situations. So, which choice is the worst one? Well, in my opinion, the worst choice is to kill Danny. And here's why. First of all, killing Danny is unnecessary and cruel. He is already defeated and helpless, trapped in a bear trap with no chance of escape. He poses no threat to you or your group anymore. Killing him is just a waste of time and energy, and it also shows that you are no better than him. You are lowering yourself to his level of savagery and violence. You are becoming what you hate. Also on top of that, killing Danny is bad for your relationship with Clementine. Clementine is the most important character in the game and your main goal is to protect her and teach her how to survive. Killing Danny in front of her will traumatize her and make her lose faith in you. She will see you as a monster and a killer, not as a friend and a guardian. She will also learn from your example and become more hardened and ruthless in the future. You don't want that for her. You want her to keep her innocence and humanity as much as possible. Now final choice of the episode, whether to loot the car or not in episode two, starved for help. I near the end of the episode, Lee and his group come across an abandoned car full of supplies such as food, water, batteries, and medicine. The car's alarm is going off, attracting walkers, and there is no sign of the owners. The group is divided on whether to take the supplies or leave them alone. What do you do? Well, I'm here to tell you that there is only one correct answer, and that is to refuse to loot the car. Yes, you heard me right. Looting the car is the worst possible choice you can make in the game. The thing is, looting the car is risky. You're attracting more walkers with the noise and you're wasting time that you could use to get back to the motel safely. You're also making yourself a target for other survivors who might see you as a threat or a resource. You're putting yourself and your group in danger for some short-term gain. Third, looting the car is pointless. It doesn't really change anything in the long run. You might get some extra food and supplies, but they won't last forever. You'll still have to deal with the same problems, such as hunger, thirst, sickness, and conflict. You'll still have to face the same enemies, such as the St. John's, the Bandits, and the Stranger. You'll still have to make the same hard choices, such as who to save, who to trust, and who to kill. And speaking of the Stranger, looting the car is the main reason why he kidnaps Clementine in Episode 5, No Time Left. 
He's the owner of the car, and he's been following you ever since you took his stuff. He blames you for the death of his family, who were killed by walkers after they ran out of supplies. He thinks you're a bad person and a bad influence on Clementini. He wants to take her away from you and make you pay for what you did. If you don't loot the car, he won't have a reason to hate you. He'll still kidnap Clementine because he's crazy and lonely, but he'll be more sympathetic and understanding. He'll admit that you're a good person and a good protector for Clementine. He'll even apologize for what he did and give you a chance to explain yourself. He'll still try to kill you because he's delusional and obsessed, but he'll be less angry and more remorseful. Now, whether to shoot the trap woman or leave her to the walkers. This happens when Lee and the group go to the dairy farm to look for food and supplies. On the way, they encounter a woman who is caught in a bear trap and screaming for help. However, there are also a lot of walkers nearby, attracted by her noise. Lee has to decide whether to shoot her and put her out of her misery, or leave her as bait for the walkers and save the bullets. See, shooting the trap woman is a waste of ammo. Ammo is scarce and valuable in the zombie apocalypse, and you never know when you might need it. By shooting the trap woman, you're wasting a bullet that could be used to protect yourself or your friends later. Plus, shooting her doesn't really help her that much. She's already bitten and infected, so she's going to turn into a walker anyway. Shooting her just speeds up the process. Second, shooting the trap woman is a risk to your safety. By shooting her, you're making more noise and attracting more walkers to your location. This could endanger you and your group, especially if you don't have a car or a safe place to hide. You might end up in a worse situation than before, surrounded by walkers and low on ammo. Not to mention, you might also anger the St. John brothers, who own the dairy farm and the trap. They might not appreciate you killing their prey and messing with their trap. Also don't you think, shooting the trap woman is a moral dilemma. By shooting her, you're taking away her choice and her dignity. You're deciding for her what's best for her, without knowing her situation or her wishes. Maybe she wants to live, maybe she has a family, maybe she has a reason to fight. By shooting her, you're denying her the chance to survive or to say goodbye to her loved ones. You're also killing a human being, which is not an easy thing to do, even in the zombie apocalypse. You might feel guilty or regretful later, and it might affect your relationship with the other characters. Next choice, whether to leave Lily behind for her crime or forgive her and bring her to the group. This choice happens in episode three, Long Road Ahead, after Lily shoots and kills Carly or Doug, depending on who you saved in episode one. This choice affects not only the fate of Lily, but also the fate of Ben, Kenny, and Clementine. First, let's see what happens if you decide to leave Lily behind. If you do this, you will anger Kenny, who will blame you for abandoning a member of the group. He will also accuse you of being a coward and a traitor, and he will lose trust and respect for you. Kenny will also be more hostile and aggressive towards you for the rest of the season, and he will be less likely to help you or agree with you on anything. On the other hand, if you decide to bring Lily with you, you will anger Ben, who will blame you for letting a murderer stay in the group. He will also accuse you of being a hypocrite and a fool, and he will lose faith and confidence in you. Ben will also be more scared and nervous around you for the rest of the season, and he will be more likely to betray you or make mistakes that put the group in danger. But that's not all. Your choice also affects the fate of Clementine, who is watching your every move and learning from your actions. If you leave Lily behind, Clementine will be shocked and scared by your decision. She will also be more distrustful and wary of you, and she will question your morality and judgment. Clementine will also be more influenced by Kenny, who will teach her to be more ruthless and pragmatic. On the other hand, if you bring Lily with you, Clementine will be confused and disappointed by your decision. She will also be more sympathetic and compassionate towards you, and she will admire your forgiveness and mercy. Clementine will also be more influenced by Ben, who will teach her to be more honest and brave. So, which is the worst possible choice you can make? In my opinion, the worst choice is to bring Lily with you. Why? Because not only do you keep a dangerous and unstable person in the group, but you also risk losing the trust and loyalty of your closest allies, Kenny and Ben. You also risk compromising the safety and well-being of the group, as Lily may try to harm or sabotage you or someone else in the future. And most importantly, you risk damaging the relationship and character development of Clementine, who is the most important person in the game. By bringing Lily with you, you teach Clementine that murder is acceptable and forgivable, and that justice and accountability are irrelevant and unnecessary. 
You also teach Clementine that loyalty and friendship are meaningless and disposable, and that survival and self-interest are paramount and supreme. You basically turn Clementine into a cold and cynical person, who will have a harder time trusting and caring for anyone in the future. Now, I'm going to discuss one of the most heartbreaking and controversial choices in the game, whether to kill Duck before he turns, or wait until he turns. Duck is the son of Kenny and Katja, two of the main characters and allies of Lee, the protagonist. In Episode 3, Duck gets bitten by a walker during a raid on a train station. His parents decide to take him to a secluded spot and say their goodbyes, while Lee and the others continue on the train. Lee has the option to join them or stay on the train. If he joins them, he has to make another choice. Either shoot Duck himself, let Kenny do it, or leave him to turn. So, which is the worst choice you can make in this situation? Well, in my opinion, the worst choice is to leave Duck to turn. For moral purposes. First of all, leaving Duck to turn is cruel and inhumane. He is a child who is suffering from a fever and a wound. He deserves a quick and painless death, not a slow and agonizing one. But leaving Duck to turn is cowardly and selfish. It shows that you don't care enough about Kenny and Katja to help them with their burden. It shows that you don't have the courage to do what needs to be done. It shows that you value your own comfort over the well-being of others. You are basically abandoning your friends in their darkest hour and leaving them to deal with the consequences. And leaving Duck to turn is risky and stupid. It could endanger the safety of the group and yourself. What if Duck turns while you are still on the train? What if he escapes from his parents and attacks you or someone else? What if he attracts more walkers to your location? What if he causes a noise that alerts the bandits who are chasing you? You are creating a potential threat that could jeopardize your survival. So, as you can see, leaving Duck to turn is the worst possible choice you can make in The Walking Dead Season 1. It is not only immoral, but also impractical. It is a choice that I would never make, and I hope you wouldn't either. Now, whether to help Omid or Krista onto the train in Episode 3, Long Road Ahead. This choice may seem trivial at first, but it actually has a huge impact on the fate of one of the characters. So, which is the worst possible choice you can make in this situation? First, let's recap what happens before this choice. After escaping from the bandits and the walkers at the Motor Inn, Lee and the group find an abandoned train and decide to use it to travel to Savannah. Along the way, they encounter a couple named Omid and Krista, who are also survivors of the apocalypse. Omid is a cheerful and optimistic guy, who likes to joke around and make light of the situation. Krista is a serious and pragmatic woman, who is more cautious and skeptical of strangers. They join the group and help them get the train working. However, things go wrong when they reach a roadblock on the tracks. The group has to get out of the train and clear the way, but they are attacked by walkers. Omid, who has an injured leg, falls behind and is surrounded by the undead. Krista tries to help him, but she is also in danger. Lee has to make a split-second decision. Who should he help first? Now this is where the choice comes in. You have two options, help Omid into the train, or help Krista onto the train. Both options seem reasonable, but they have very different outcomes. If you choose to help Omid into the train, you will run towards him and grab his arm. You will then drag him to the train and push him inside. However, as you do this, you will notice that Krista is still struggling with the walkers. She will scream for your help, but you won't be able to reach her in time. She will be bitten by a walker and die. Omid will be devastated by her death and blame you for it. He will also become depressed and suicidal and eventually die of his wound in episode 4. If you choose to help Krista onto the train, you will run towards her and grab her hand. You will then pull her up to the train and help her inside. However, as you do this, you will notice that Omid is still surrounded by the walkers. He will beg for your help, but you won't be able to save him. He will be bitten by a walker and die. Krista will be heartbroken by his death and blame you for it. She will also become cold and distant, and eventually leave the group in episode 5. So, which is the worst possible choice you can make in this situation? Well, in my opinion the worst choice is to help Omid into the train. Why? Because by doing so, you are sacrificing Krista, who is a more valuable and capable member of the group. Krista is smart, resourceful, and strong. She can handle herself in a fight, and she can also take care of Clementine, who is the most important person in the game. Omid, on the other hand, is weak, injured, and useless. He can't contribute much to the group, and he can't protect Clementine. 
he is also more likely to die anyway, because of his wound and his depression. By saving Omid you are not only losing Krista, but you are also putting Clementine at risk. Now, I know some of you may disagree with me. You may think that Omid is a better person than Krista, because he is more friendly and funny. You may think that Krista is a worse person than Omid, because she is more rude and harsh. You may think that saving Omid is the right thing to do, because he is more in need of help. You may think that saving Krista is the wrong thing to do, because she is more capable of surviving. You may think that it doesn't matter who you save, because they both die anyway. Well, you are entitled to your opinion, but you are wrong. And here's why. The Walking Dead is not a game about being nice or being mean. It's not a game about being fair or being selfish. It's not a game about being moral or being immoral. It's a game about survival. And in a game about survival, you have to make the best decisions for yourself and your group. You have to weigh the pros and cons of each choice. You have to consider the short-term and the long-term consequences. You have to think with your head, not with your heart. And in this case, the best decision is to save Krista, not Omid. So, there you have it. That's why I think that helping Omid into the train is the worst possible choice you can make in The Walking Dead, Season 1. Do you agree or disagree with me? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like the video. If you don't want to miss next part of this video, then subscribe please. See ya.